All right, we back. Now, today's going to be a follow-up video to my video I dropped the other day on Dr. Umar Johnson's interview on the Joe Budden podcast, right? In case you didn't know, you know, I'm going to run the footage to refresh your memory, and then we're going to jump right into it. Are you mixed race? No. Or are you a bunny hopper? Yes. Per, per your, hold, that's why that's you not have true. a liberal that's perspective. That's not true. That's not because you go home that's to a not white true. woman. Yes, but that's not true. I felt this way before I met my white girlfriend. So help me understand how you could be so passionate about the black. I'm not. I'm not. The, pa I'm passionate. I'm. I'm an objective thinker. I don't. If something makes sense, so you have me, no loyalty to the black community. No, I do have. I probably employ more blacks than you. Okay, so help me understand that you employ more blacks than me, but you go home to a white woman. Why you don't have a black woman? Because I fell in love with a white woman, not a black. Why woman. didn't you fall in love with a black? I did. Woman? I fell in love with a black woman. We broke up. Okay. And why didn't you find it? Fall in love with another black woman. I did that too. We broke up. Okay. Oh, shit. And why didn't you get another one and another one and another one until you found the right one? Because I I met a white woman that I fell in love with, and that's the person. That and I'm you're with being today. disingenuous about that's something. Not true. And let me tell you what you're being true. disingenuous about. True. Romance mm -hmm. is a function of focus and opportunity. Now I woke up this morning, and I seen DJ Vlad uploaded a flashback onto his YouTube channel. He said this, Dr. Umar Johnson took donations for a school and has not opened up the school. Now it's ironic because DJ Vlad is a white man who he be dealing with a black woman. Yeah, yeah, the opposite. The snow bunny crisis he be talking about. When it comes to DJ Vlad, this is the opposite end of the argument that Dr. Umar Johnson never wants to approach with the same passion, energy, and venom and vitriol. Nah. When it comes to the white man, he's very respectful. When it comes to the snow bunnies, oh man, he's beating on his chest like King Kong consciousness. When it comes to the white man though, he's very respectful. He's very respectful, very cordial. And now you got DJ Vlad, a white man who has been known to exclusively deal with black women. I think his girlfriend is black or the woman in his life is black, but DJ Vlad has a reputation for dealing with black women. He got a fetish. He got a fetish for the African flesh, right? So now due to the fact that Dr. Umar Johnson is going viral. Now, DJ Vlad is taking shots at Dr. Umar Johnson. And I can't even defend you, brother, because when it comes to the white man and the black woman, you know where to be found, man. You know where to be found. But when it comes to the black man and the white woman, though, oh, man, you're the first one on the scene. But when it comes to the white man dealing with the women of your community, you don't have the same energy and passion when it comes to the topic or the subject. That's a shame, brother. That's a shame. You know, should have kept the same energy. But anyways, I'm going to play a clip from the good brother Godfrey who I'm not even going to say nothing. I'm going to let the good brother Godfrey say it himself. Let's get into it. Off, you sucking off a of black black culture. You taking all, you know, you making money off black culture. You you fuck with black girls, shame on them. You know what I mean? Oh shit. And now, you know, cuz they giving you that confidence to talk crazy to us. Mm. That's what's happening. Mm. They giving you confidence. These black women give you confidence to disrespect brothers like us. Now, we about to take a look at some of the reactions on social media. Because this interview between Dr. Umar Johnson and Joe Budden, it caused a lot of conversation. And even in my comment section last night, I was surprised because I didn't really think that my commentary was polarizing or controversial. But I seen a lot of folks went into the comment section and they were triggered by what I had to say. So we're going to take a look at some of the comments in my comment section as well. But in summary, I didn't really disagree with most of what Umar said, to be honest. When it comes to Dr. Umar Johnson, me and him are kind of on the same page when it comes to most topics. But when it comes to this topic, when it comes to the topic of family, when it comes to the topic of who black men are going to choose to be the wives and mothers of our children, you know, me and Dr. Umar Johnson, we always going to butt heads because he never wants to keep it all the way 100. He never wants to keep it all the way real, you know, but regardless of that fact, that's still my guy, though. I still got love for Dr. Umar Johnson. But anyways, man, we're going to take a look at some of the reactions on social media because I thought it was very interesting. Now, like I said in my video yesterday on Dr. Umar Johnson, I said, listen, bro. When it comes to when it comes to me myself personally, Nefakari that's Celine, I don't deal with women who date outside the race. And there were some folks in the comment section that was triggered by what I had to say. And I didn't understand why, because it's a lot of black women that feel the same exact way as me. It's a lot of black women that hold the same exact position as me. For example, take a look up on the screen. This lady said, No racist shade. But once I find out you like white girls, I will not like you anymore. Now, what is different from what she said? Then what I said in my comment section, in my commentary last night, I said the, the same exact thing. But when I said all of a sudden folks came into the comment section, they was triggered. They didn't understand what I was saying. But bro, what I say is not out of the ordinary. Like I grew up around black women. I know how they, I know how they think. They feel the same exact way as me. 
they feel the same exact way as me even though we already know brothers we know the double standards they're gonna try to pass off their behavior as different oh when we run off with the white folks it's different but they're gonna try to hold us to a different standard listen we already know how they do it man i'm not talking about that but they feel the exact same way as me right so i never understand why they get triggered when i say listen i don't want nothing to do with the white man's trash like what is so wrong with the black man saying that you feel the exact you feel the exact same way as me so like we got a lot in common now let's continue this lady said she doesn't even trust black men who be dating the snow bunny she said to herself so what is that different from what i say when i say once i find out you was running around with them white folks you canceled you done i don't want nothing to do with you what is wrong with me saying that when the women for the exact same way someone answered the question someone answered the question i don't understand it i don't understand it this lady said black men who run off with the snow bunnies are not even men that she would talk to now listen i don't get triggered when women say this i don't get triggered when anybody says this so you know because i don't be i don't i don't engage in that lifestyle but the only thing i ask is please respect black men's preferences okay because i respect the preferences of the women when the women say they don't want to deal with you know sn snow bunny hoppers and snow bunny chasers it is what it is like i'm not about to complain like i, I don't give a fuck but when a black man says it listen respect our preferences respect our you know respect our lifestyle you know it is what it is man let's continue this lady said i don't care how it looks she doesn't trust black men that dates the snow bunnies move away from me that's what she said and i feel the same way in reverse so you know it is what it is man like i respect they, i respect their preferences just respect my preferences that's it baby that's it now let's continue now this lady came into my comment section and she said this malcolm x was engaged in swirl activity at one point in his life now i don't know why she brought this up i'm assuming it's because in the video i said i don't deal with any women that be dibbling and dabbling outside the race so she tried to yo a lot of folks came into the comment section talking about malcolm x malcolm x malcolm x man listen listen but i told her this there are many black women who share my similar views they'll never deal with a black man who bunny hop i'm the exact same way I don't bring trash into my house. I leave it on the curb outside where it belongs. Now, some might deem that as harsh, but like I said, it's a free country. And all I ask is simply respect black men's preferences. Cause I respect y'all preferences. That's all. Listen, I respect y'all. So just respect the black man's preferences. It is what it is. Now let's continue. This brother said, you can't date white women and be pro-black. Now, <laughs> this brother responded and he said this, why do y'all always say white women, but you never say white men or white people? <laughs> Yo, I said a similar thing on my video last night. You know, it seems that this smoke only goes in one direction. You know, y'all got big smoke for the white women, but when it comes to the white man, y'all shook, y'all docile, y'all meek, y'all small, y'all humble. Y'all keep y'all keep your mouth quiet. I noticed that. When it comes to the white women, y'all extra courageous. You fearless when it comes to the white women. When it comes to the white women, I see what it is. And that was one of my critiques of Dr. Umar Johnson, right? You got big smoke for the white woman. You got big smoke for the snow bunny. But when it comes to the white man, you keep your mouth shut. You lower the volume. You lower your voice. You don't speak with the same passion and energy and venom. Nah, nah. When it comes to the, yeah. When it comes to the white woman, oh man, y'all big and bad beating on your chest. When it comes to the white man though, yeah, you lower your tone. You lower your tone. You don't, you don't talk with that same fire. I noticed that. I noticed that. I noticed that. Yeah, I noticed that. And it's not only Dr. Umar Johnson, it's something in the community in general, right? When it comes to, you know, black men and white women, oh man, everybody got something to say. Everybody got something to say. Everybody beating on their chest. When it comes to the black woman and the white man though, everybody shut the fuck up. Everybody keep quiet. Like we on a plantation. Everybody keep quiet. You niggas scared. <laughs> niggas is scared. Anyway, let's continue. This person said, it's because they're scared of white men. It's a fact. I mean, what other conclusion can you come to, right? Even in my comment section last night, and we're going to get into it. It was a bunch of people going in on white women and black men, right? But when it comes to the white men and the black women, everybody was like, you got to understand, brother. You got to understand, you know, it's it's not enough black men. You know, you got to understand why the women is, is running off with the Europeans, bro. You got to understand. You bros, is, yeah, niggas is scared, bro. Y'all scared. Y'all shook. Y'all pussy. It is what it is. Let's continue. Now, this person came into my comment section because... In the video i had said you know dr Mar johnson you got big smoke you got big smoke for the black man though but how come the smoke is only going in one direction this person came into the comment section and said brother dr umar's job is to speak to and about black men not the black woman the man checks the man and the woman checks the woman i came into the comment section i responded i said nigga that's cap 
Nigga, that's Cap. Where, women check the women? Where's the female version of Dr. Umar Johnson then, huh? Where's she at? Where's the female version of Dr. Umar Johnson sitting down amongst a room full of women, wagging her finger at him, telling him, you better get with a black man. You better get with a black man for, for the sake of the black community. Where's she at? Where's she at? Talking about women check the women. Y'all boys is scared, brother. Y'all boys is scared. But let me tell you, as a black man who came up under the family structure, no, the man doesn't only check the men. The man checks the men, he checks the women, and he checks the children because he's the man. That's what I seen coming up. That's what I seen coming up. So when y'all come into my comment section, and I got a bunch of comments like this, bro. I got so many comments like this. Oh, brother, you know, when you the man, you check the man. You don't check the women. You don't talk to the women. So you a leader, but you don't check the women? You the leader, but you don't check the children? Man, listen, y'all boys don't know shit about the family structure if that's what you think. If that's what you think, you don't know shit about the family structure. The man checks the man, he checks the women, and he checks the children because he is the captain of the ship. Now let's continue. This brother said, I'm sorry, but there is literally no defense for marrying a white woman. This person said, why are you saying woman instead of person? <laughs> Listen, we have to ask this. And my hypothesis is that the majority of y'all men is scared. Y'all scared of the white man. Y'all scared. Y'all scared of the white man. Like on the plantation, when the white man had unlimited access to our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, our aunties. Y'all didn't do shit. Y'all stood there and watched. And y'all still standing there and watching because y'all scared. Y'all scared to talk about the white man. Y'all scared. Y'all shook. This admit it, man. Y'all shook. That's why y'all talk about the white women 24-7 all day and night. When it comes to the white man, though, listen, brother, we can't talk about that, brother. We can't talk. It's the, it's the women got to talk about that. The women check the women. The men check the men. The women check women. Nah, just admit you scared. Just admit you scared, and we can, we can make some progress if you admit that you scared. Now, let's continue. At the top, this lady said, imagine a white man saying there's no defense for marrying a black woman. And this brother responded, and he said this. I'm sure there are hundreds, even thousands of white families that feel this exact same way, but it takes no skin off my back. I feel you, brother. I feel you. I feel you. I mean, I don't feel no type of way when a, if a white man said that. I mean, it is what it is, bro. Like the brother said, takes no skin off my back. Let's continue. This lady said, what does your partner have to do with being pro-black? Last time I checked, this wasn't the 60s. Now, listen, Dr. Umar Johnson he would never address a woman like this. He would never address a woman talking like this with her, you know, colorblind mentality. We are in the modern world. We can, you know, we can make love to white folks and be pro-black. He would never, he would never come to a woman like this with the same venom and energy that he comes to a snow, to a snow bunny hopper, as he calls it, a black man that's snow bunny hopping. He would never come at a woman like this with this rhetoric. He would never come with the same energy and passion. He would come very respectful. He would come very respectful, very humble. Queen, you gotta understand, queen. You know, nah, he would, but when it comes to the black man, though, he raising his voice, he beating his chest. Man, listen, it, it's, it's very different energy. It's very different energy. You know, y'all boys be scared. Y'all boys be shook. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It is what it is, though. Let's continue. This person said, black women don't normally date outside their race. More black men do it. And I responded, I said this, it's literally impossible to keep track of the race that any person is dating unless you volunteer that information to the government. I've never submitted the race of any of my women on a survey or a data collection agency. So how can you keep track of this data to provide credibility to your statement? I'm a black man, so tell me who is keeping track of who I date. Who is keeping track of the race of women that I date? That's private information, right? Because a common talking point, even in the Joe Budden interview last night, in the Joe Budden interview, Dr. Umar Johnson said that black men date outside their race more than every other man on the planet put together, right? Now, he didn't have no he didn't have no data to, you know, support his claim. He didn't have no research. He didn't have no no, because like I said, you cannot keep track of who black men are dating. I always give the example. I could go out right now after I upload this video. I could go to the bank. I could go to the gym. I could go to man, I could go to T-Mobile to pay my phone bill and I could meet a beautiful woman at the counter at T-Mobile. And I could get to know where I, we could exchange numbers and we could start dating for a few months or whatever. You know, we could start, you know, messing around. Who is keeping track of her race? Answer that question. Who is keeping track of her race? And for someone like Dr. Umar Johnson, who is a historian, who understands black history on a, on a decent level, for him to say that it's a black man that dead outside their race more than everybody. When you can look at countries like Brazil, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, Venezuela, Argentina, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, El Salvador, Panama, the list goes on and on. What do all of these nations have in common? They all contain the genetic material of white men who went to those nations and procreated with the local women and the African women. 
It wasn't black men that created the genetic makeup of those nations. It was white men. It was white men and black women. So don't talk about, oh, it's the, it's the black man dead outside. His, no, it's the white man dead outside his race. It's the white man. It's the reason why the majority of black folks in America, you got some European DNA in your bloodstream. It's because of the white man. The white man you scared to address. The white man you scared to bring to the podium. The white man you scared to talk about. It was the white man, brother. It was the white man. It ain't the black man that did that. It was the white man. It was the white man. It's, it's the reason why the vast majority of black men in the Western Hemisphere, you can trace your origins back to a European male ancestor. Even if you are dark skinned black man, a lot of y'all got European male ancestors for a reason. And I'm gonna leave it at that. Now let's go. This person said, if we touch on the numbers, black women still would need to look elsewhere for mates or practice polyamory or remain single or travel and adapt to a new culture. I think this is why Umar doesn't address it. And most black women are going to follow their men in whatever he's doing. So there's really nothing there. Men are still going to choose the women they're most attracted to. And I responded and I said this. I disagree about the numbers. For example, I think the numbers seem lopsided for a variety of reasons because we are not factoring in a few elements. A common complaint in the ecosystem is that there are not enough black men, quote unquote, because they are allegedly incarcerated or involved in the LGBT community. But we never factor in the amount of women who are also incarcerated or involved in the LGBT community also. I think the numbers would be more realistic if we factor in these other elements that are commonly ignored. Now, a common uh, a common theme you would hear uh, people want to say, well, it's not enough black men. So we got to give our we got to give our daughters and our sisters away to these white dudes because, you know, it's not enough black men. It's not enough black men. But then I have to ask the question. OK, so you're making the argument that the black man, he's you know, he's in the LGBT. He's incarcerated. He's this, that and the third. So you're making the argument that all the women are available to be wise. All the women are are of childbearing age, they're healthy, physically, mentally, spiritually, they're ready to go to start a family, they have no uh, health issues, and they're just ready to go, they're all heterosexual, all of them, every single one of them. Like, the argument doesn't make no sense. First of all, the amount of black women involved in the LGBT community that are either bisexual, hetero, flexible, whatever you wanna call it, is 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 staggering, is staggering, and it's, it's way larger than black men. It's way, it's, women in general, they embrace the LGBT. They they embrace the LGBT lifestyle way more than men do. So once you factor in the women that are also LGBT, you know, kissing on girls and shit like that, touching on girls, you gotta eliminate a large chunk of the population. A large chunk of the population. So once you remove the LGBT women, the incarcerated women, the mentally ill women that are on medication. I'm in the pharmaceutical industry. A lot of our women are on medication for all type of ailments: bipolar, um, depression um schizophrenia Tourette's you know all type of different all type of different struggles right once you factor in all of that and then you have to make sure that they're of childbearing age because they even have children do they even want children if a man wants children you have to factor in all these things and then I think that once you factor in all of that together then the numbers would be more even in my opinion right but when you have the argument framed in a way where all the women are ready to go and it's the men that are not ready to go you're being dishonest you're not being honest you're not being honest but anyways, let's continue. This person said, the reason Dr. Umar Johnson doesn't talk about black women being with white men as much because he feels the only reason black women get with white men is because of the lack of black men that try to get with them. Black men get with white women by choice. Black women get with white men out of desperation. Oh my God. Now, at the end, he said this. If a black woman ever been with an outsider, I end my relations there. I completely agree with that. Now, I replied to him and I said this. Desperation? Why is it always an excuse or a justification? Maybe she chose whites because she's a goofy. Why do we always try to justify the nonsense when women are involved? It's not that deep, bro. Maybe she's just a tap dancer. Y'all bring fire against black men. So I'm just saying to maintain the same energy across the board. That's all I'm saying, bro. That's all I'm saying. Because when it comes to black men and white women, y'all got so much smoke, so much passion, so much energy and venom. But when it comes to the other side of the game, though, when it comes to the other side, though, Y'all don't come with the same fire. Y'all come with a justification. Y'all y'all quick to excuse the bullshit. I don't I don't like that shit, bro. But anyway, let's continue. This person said, "What if the girl was uneducated when dating other races? Are we condemning people for past decisions?" I responded and I said this. Black men are not obligated to dig in the white man's trash when there are other women available. And I feel justified in saying that because like I said in the beginning of the video, I showed you 
Women feel the exact same way. Black women feel the exact same way. So do not condemn black men for feeling the exact same way. Listen, listen, don't judge black men. Y'all love to do that. Y'all love to condemn black men. And when black women do the exact same thing, y'all don't come with the same energy and condemnation. Listen, the same thing I said is the same thing that black women be saying. It's the same exact thing. So like I said, we not obligated to dig in the white man's trash or take trash into our home. The trash is supposed to go outside and stay outside on the curb for pickup. Now let's continue. This lady said, I just can't see myself dating outside my race. And I was like, 100. You know what I'm saying? 100. Let's continue. This person said, he is not addressing the women because they are not the heads of the kingdom or the empires. It's the men. Once men get in place, the women will follow. It's ignorant to say, if he was really concerned about the black man, he would address the woman. I really can't take your statement seriously, honestly. And I responded and I said this. So he holds men accountable while allowing white men to intermingle with our women with zero pushback? Coward rhetoric. Holding men accountable while allowing outsiders to penetrate your inner circle. That's not a king, that's a vassal. If you are the head of the empire, then you set the rules of engagement for the women and the children. And to be honest, man, we could really tell who really came up seeing a black man in his rightful position as the head of the household. Because when you come around talking about if you're the head of the household, if you're the king of the empire, you don't address the women? What? Nigga, what? I could tell, yeah, your mother was definitely running the household. In my household, it was the black man running shit. The black man checks everybody in the household, nigga. Let's continue. This person at the top said this. Black men have been bigger swirlers than black women for a long time. And their favorite excuse is they didn't want him when he was younger. But wait, men in other groups women didn't want them, but they still ended up marrying their own. And this brother responded at the bottom and he said this. I don't get into that because that's not necessarily true. Black women begin smashed by white men left and right. They just don't tend to offer them marriage or relationships, so the marriage stats don't show who's swirling based on them alone. And that goes back to what I said earlier. It's impossible to measure what is happening behind closed doors, right? You cannot keep track of the race that anybody is dating because that is private information. Nobody is submitting that information to the government, right? So everybody keeps saying, oh, black women never date outside their race. They never date outside their race. Nigga, how do you know? Nigga, how do you know? Are you following black women around? <laughs> Nigga, are you following them around? Do you, have pro do you have private investigators on payroll keeping track of their whereabouts? No, nigga, no. Niggas is just saying shit. Niggas is just saying shit, bro. <laughs> oh, black men is a day outside their race more than everybody put together. Nigga, what? What's the, how, how do you know? Who is keeping track of what black men are doing? Niggas just be saying shit, bro. Niggas just be saying shit. Because guess what? You cannot measure casual relationships. You cannot measure one night stands, you know, somebody, you know, you deal with a woman for a couple months. You cannot measure that. Nobody keeps track of that. So why you keep talking about black men dead outside their race, they dead outside. You don't know what the fuck black men are doing because it's private information. Just like black women can say we never marry outside the race. But guess what? Nobody measures casual relationships. So if you are on a dating app, you know, Bumble, Hinge, Tinder, whatever, you, you meet up with somebody out in public, you link up on a late night. Nobody is keeping track of what's happening on a late night. So y'all need to stop talking about, oh, this person is dating outside their race more than this person because you have no data to support your declaration. You just be saying shit. Y'all just be saying shit. Let's continue. This person said, now this is somebody who, you know, it's a subscriber of mine that's been subscribed to the channel for a while. She said this, Nefakari, I agree with you, but you are forgetting that our women outnumber our men in the United States eight to one. Now, listen, I don't know. Y'all just be put, y'all just be pulling numbers out, man. Y'all just be throwing numbers out the wall. You know, black men dead outside the race more than everybody. We outnumber black men eight to one. You know, it's like, God damn, bro. Yo. Anyway, let's continue. It's a drastic number of black men locked up. I mean, black women are also locked up. Uh, making the numbers disproportionately outrageous. One of our healthy, wealthy, successful, educated black men dating outside his race is much more detrimental to our race economically than the other way around. So this lady is telling me, and I'm going to be respectful because I, you know, I rock with her. But she's telling me that a white woman and a black man getting together is way more detrimental than a white man and a black woman getting together, which is such a common piece of rhetoric that you hear, which is crazy because I think she is married to a black man. So we even have women that are married to black men defending um, women getting married to white men. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, you know, brothers, it's crazy. But regardless of that fact, History has shown us that that's a lie. History has shown us that's a lie. You can simply take a look at all the countries I mentioned earlier in the video. Brazil, Dominican Republic, Colombia, Venezuela, Argentina, where there's a large mixed race population that was created from white men and black women. 
Now, I ask you this question. Where is the black power in those nations? Is there any black power in Brazil? No. The dark-skinned Brazilians getting treated like shit. Is there any black power in the Dominican Republic? No. The dark-skinned Dominicans getting treated like shit. Is there any black power in Argentina? No. The dark-skinned Argentinians getting treated like shit. So, they talk they talking to me about, "Oh, when the white man comes around, it's not as bad. It's not as bad." I'm not trying to hear none of that shit, bro. I'm not trying to hear none of it. None of it. Because history has shown us when white men and black women come together, the dark-skinned folks get treated like shit. That's what happens. A caste system gets created and the dark-skinned folks get treated as fifth-class citizens in those nations, in those civilizations. That's what happens. Now, let's get see. I responded to her and I said this. Dr. Umar Johnson was bringing up topics in his interview such as espionage, forming alliances with foreign cultures, and pillow talking with outsiders. These same exact talking points can be launched in the direction of women who jump in bed with our ancestral enemies. I'm not understanding how everyone becomes militant when it comes to white women, but then everyone becomes weak and docile when it comes to white men. So the white woman is forbidden, but the white man is acceptable? That is Umar logic in a nutshell. That's really what it is. And I call it plantation politics because it basically means that the black man cannot touch the white man's woman, but the white man can touch the black man's woman? That's what we doing? That's what we doing? Fuck out of here, bro. Fuck out of here with that dumb shit. But like I said, shout out to Miss President. I fuck with her. You know, she's cool people. She's cool people, but I got to keep it 100. I'm not hearing none of that shit. Now, let's continue. It reminds me of a tweet that I seen from Kimberly, uh, Kimberly Nicole Foster a while back. She said this, take a look up on the screen. A black woman marrying a white man is not the same as a black man marrying a white woman. I don't know why this is even a debate. Now she's halfway right. It's not the same. It's actually a hundred times worse as history has shown. Now let's continue. This person said, oh, these be my type of conversations. I remember when Cynthia G got into his ass about black men in our community. Now he speaks the truth about them, how Cynthia G did. I cannot wait. Now, you have to ask yourself, you have to ask yourself, how come Cynthia G fans are also fans of Dr. Umar Johnson's rhetoric? You have to ask yourself, how come divestors, how come divestors are in the comment section talking about they love what Dr. Umar Johnson is saying? You have to ask yourself that question. When you in the same camp, when you spitting the same rhetoric as divestors, you got, you, listen, that's how you know you want some bullshit, Umar. That's how you know you want some dumb shit. Cause you don't keep the same energy. Listen, cause y'all scared of the white man. That's what it is. Y'all scared of the white man. As soon as you start talking about the white man, the divestors, they not gonna be a fan no more. The only reason the divestors are fans of Dr. Umar's rhetoric is because he would never dare disrespect the white man. He would never dare disrespect the white man with the same energy he comes at the white woman. That's why. Because he goes 100 miles per hour at the white woman, but he becomes a docile little, meek little, humble black man when it comes to the white man. Yeah. Now let's continue. This person said, you love who you love, said by nobody but blacks since the 1960s. Man, that shit funny as hell. Like I said, it's only black folks pushing that nonsense. Black folks and maybe some white dudes who got a fetish. They're the only ones talking that nonsense. You love who you love. I just, you know, you can't control who you love. You know, I love the white people, I love them. Yo, it's only black folks saying that. The Arab man ain't saying that. The Chinese man ain't saying that. The Indian man ain't saying that. It's only black men and black women saying that. You love who you love. We, we are the ambassadors of that nonsense. You love who you love. I can't control who I love. Bro, pathetic. Let's continue. This brother said, Man said you can't control who you fall in love with. Meanwhile, I've been falling in love with a black woman my whole life. And at the bottom, I gave him the fire emoji. Cause brother, me too, brother, me too. Since the second grade, brother, I remember I remember the first crush I ever had, brother. Her name was Imani. Her dad had the goddamn uh uh Mercedes convertible. Man, I used to go to sleep dreaming about Imani, bro. Shout out to Imani. She probably bad as hell right now. Man, wh where Imani at? I don't know, but shout out to her, man. Yeah, brother, I just love black women, man. Regardless of all their flaws and imperfections, I love black women, dog, and it just is what it is. Let's continue. This lady said, great discussion. The same concept in Haiti occurs in Africa as well. Those Arabs in North Africa, they marry each other, and they want nothing to do with sub-Saharan people. We must also do the same to preserve our culture and traditions. And I said, correct. You see, now, listen, if a black woman follows my channel, you know, this is a black woman, I believe. Uh, if a black woman follows my channel, you already know she got she got a, she got a halfway decent mindset if she follow my content, right? So I agree. I feel the exact same way because I had mentioned in my video in Dr. Juan Johnson how the Arab families in my country, 
you know, the Jewish families in my country, they've been in the nation for over 100 years and they've never married outside the group. In a country that is almost 100% black, at least 95% black, they've never married outside the group. And she came into the comment section and said the same exact thing happens in Africa. They stay amongst each other. They're not talking about that bullshit that the love is love. I can't control who I love. No, 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 they're not doing that. They're not doing that. And you also know what else they're doing? The men are holding the women accountable, which means that the men are not allowing outsiders, they're not allowing foreigners to come and come and have unlimited access to their wives and their daughters and their sisters and their mamas and their aunties like black men do you think the arab man is not holding his women accountable to the cultural standards that he that he deems acceptable do you think the arab man is opening the door for all groups of men to come deal with his women you know yo bro the arab man tells his women put on that damn hijab i don't want to see nothing but your eyeballs cover up i don't want yo cover your whole body up Meanwhile, black men sit up in my comment section talking about, oh, the men talk to the men. We don't talk to the women. We don't address the women. Just admit you scared, brother. Just admit you scared of the women and you scared of the white man too. Let's continue. This person said, quick question. If a white dude says he won't be with the bunny who has indulged with black dudes in the past, are you sane minded enough to not try and label that white man a racist? I responded and I said this. Many white men already hold this opinion. This is not a groundbreaking development. But anyways, man, I'm not gonna be here too long, man. I'm not gonna be here too long. I had to do a follow-up video. I had to do a follow-up video to that uh, Dr. Umar Johnson video, which is going crazy right now on my channel, man. I mean, that joint about to hit like 60,000 views in like one day, bro. What the hell? That's wild, bro. That's wild. <laughs> That's wow. How the hell that how do, yo I, I don't even got 8,000 subscribers. That joint did damn near 60,000 views in 24 hours. Anyways, man. It's your boy Never Card that's Celine back in the village. Yes indeed. Cash up on the screen and I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass and I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fought it. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down a generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching, he blocking my vision. Care for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport Babylon falling, I go to the source Packing my luggage and go overseas Shorty be with me and she so at least Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence probably gon' murder me Don't fuck with brands cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces